Hi there, it's Minovate, and this is the next episode of Shifted Reality. I would really like to be able to hit 500 subscribers before the end of the year, and in order to do that, I need more info from you, the viewers. If you could help me out and just, if you're not subscribed, comment anything about quality of the video, what caused you to click on the video, anything at all to just help me out and improve the quality of these shows, I would greatly appreciate it. Also, this is episode 16 of my sh first season of this Let's Play Shifted Reality series. So if you do enjoy this episode, please consider going back and checking out some previous episodes I've done. Now, last time, last episode, I noticed these new tanks at Bias's Ice Wings base. And I was like, oh, I have an idea for a prank, but I don't know if I can do it. Well, it turns out that I can't. Um, this is just not my build style. So I had to turn to YouTube tutorials. And I found a tutorial guiding on a design by an Easy Leaf to add in a B-52 bomber. That my idea is I'm going to make a on an attack run on these tanks, hopefully have it even preparing to drop a bomb. Well, this is awkward. I'm only halfway through the tutorial and Bias I swig logged on and has seen that I am building outside of his base. Um, he's not particularly happy about having a uh, bomber approaching his tanks and uh, I really wish we had a good voice chat solution for this bedrock server. But, uh, no, 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 no! Oh, crud. Oh, that was frustrating. But anyway, so our server owner, Real Egg, asked me to meet him at my base. Um, apparently, he wanted to purchase some stone. And, unfortunately... Between my B-52 bomber and Traintronic borrowing my stone to build a bridge for me, I seem to be a bit low at the moment. Um, looks like I need four stacks because he wanted a full shulker. So I am going to have to go back to resupplying and smelting cobblestone back into stone. I mean, I could just mine it as well, since I do have Silk Touch, but this is just going to be a little bit easier. And Real Egg had agreed to pay one diamond block for this, and well, yeah, that seems fair. It's like, what, comes up to what, three stacks of stone per diamond? Do you think I undercharged him? Comment below if you think that a diamond block for a shulker box full of stone is a fair trade or if he got the better end of the deal. And there it is. In all of its glory, one B-52 flying fortress ready to drop some havoc and make an attack run on Bice's base. Now, I know I want, said I wanted to achieve a open bomb bay door and ready to drop bombs. However, I really couldn't get a good design for a bomb that would fit inside the fuselage of the build there. And when I tried to look it up, all I found was tutorials on making... TNT flying machines that would detonate once they hit their target. And that's not what I was going for. I just wanted something simple that looked like a bomb that was being prepared to be dropped. And I really only have about a 3x3 three three space inside the plane in order to work with. So I'm not... Unfortunately, I didn't have that. If you have any good designs... Be sure to pin them in the comments below. 
I may come back and look at that if I can find something. But Bias did let me finish building it, and he had his response of building these turret guns as a defense. But, haha, <laughs> I'm already past the range of them. So, I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna leave a little <laughs> note on the side of his signs here to mock him because his guns did not stop the plane. Let's get back to my base. Now, to get started with this big space, I need to formulate a little bit of a plan. Uh, most of what I want to put in is up at that level where the wool is. And this is a lower level, which I do have a plan for, but it's not important for this phase of the build. And... So I need to plan how I'm going to be doing this bottom part to build up to the main level. And that's going to kind of guide me. And the first thing I need to decide is, am I going to put any kind of exits out on this side? And while it's here, I'm not going to. I'm just going to get the, give this a solid wall to build up. But over here, there is this natural formed tunnel that leads out to the side. I'm going to start by redoing this and making it look more intentional in the building. And have that as either a side exit or maybe even a secret exit someday. But that's the first thing I want to do because that's going to kind of guide the rest of this development. Now there's two basic reasons why I had to do this part first. The one is this allows me to get an easy way in and out. So as the walls get put in and I need to be able to access different parts of this, this allows me to get to the lower level easily. And the second reason is this is going to help me design and develop the walls as we fill in this area into the building that we wanted to add on to our base. Because as I do with all of these large sections is I break them up into smaller pieces that are less intimidating to look at. And the, having this will give me an idea of where I could put that first height line and that will help me break up that first level at least of individual sections and make it easier and less intimidating to work on the design of this. Uh, I don't believe I did this. I just got done putting down all of these stairs for the wire framing. Kind of designating where we'd be putting walls and separating out spaces. And then it occurs to me, I put it all on upside down. This is supposed to be going the other way. And I was doing it wrong right from the very beginning. Uh, so now I need to tear all this down and put it back up opposite. So I still have no idea to put these signs up. And I was going to finally remove them when I noticed someone changed what it said. What do you call a cow with no legs? That's easy. The answer is ground beef. So whilst I don't really know who put these signs here, and now that they're changing them up, I think I'm going to keep them. At least for the moment, that is. Now that I'm getting further along with putting in the wire framing, and I'm starting to look at how I am going to be doing the walls and considering it, I ran into a little bit of an issue with an earlier step. Oh, ah, I made it. First try. Over here, when I built this patio, I just matched it up with where the terrain artery was before I dug it all out. And I didn't necessarily have a plan for what all of this was going to look like. And now that I'm looking at it, I'm thinking down there where you see the tough bricks and polished stuff, I'm thinking that that layer should have walls made out of deep slate for the darkness. And as it rises out, to give a shift and a change 
I should then put in top up here to kind of again play with the light in the shadow since it looks a little bit dimmer and then up here on this level is where I should have the walls like that now I'm thinking I'm not going to change the walls that are on the outside of the patio right there I'm just going to change what's on the walls of the inside right here because that's going to need to line up with the rest of these so next I'm going to, I'm going to tear out these walls and use them as I continue with my wire framing as you can see it's a little bit of a three block tall solution and later on I will come in and I will replace these walls with tough blocks that is going to match the rest of that level. So I'm still continuing with my wireframing and since I'm right about this level where I have the end stone, I went out, grabbed some more end stone and started working on a pattern for this level of the wireframe. And I think I came up with a pretty good design. I, I did this side here first and while that kind of worked out pretty well, it actually worked out perfectly. I mean, I had the exact number of distance to get this repeating pattern and I really like how that looks. And it's one of those things, if you're really far away from something, you might not be able to see the little bits and bobs, but you definitely see big patterns like that. And that looks great, that looks amazing to me. And on the sides, like there and there, it needed a little bit of tweaking with the jagged bit, yeah, but that mostly fits in pretty well. I'm liking this, I'm liking this. And so I continued around on all the straight edges and it was perfect. But then I have the round tower. The first three sections of this round tower more or less work because they're mostly straight at this point. But here is where you kind of start running into problems and sometimes flying by the seat of your pants like I tend to do or trying to pre-plan these things is the key to success. This next section is the most roundy bit. And so not only do I have to transition from looking at it this way and seeing the pattern still going, I also need to be looking at it from here, actually more like here, and still see the pattern. So that when it finishes, and I'm looking at it from this direction, I see that pattern. So it kind of goes around this curved edge. So I really need to get it so either when you're viewing it looking south or you're viewing it looking east or you're viewing it looking at the southeast direction, somehow that pattern is still pretty visible. And that is a little bit of a tricky situation and I'm not sure how I'm gonna work this out, but let's keep going on this. This is I'm loving the way that looks. That looks amazing. So I don't want to give that up far. So let's figure out how to do this. Now this is why B always tells me I should design these things in creative. And while I don't disagree that it'd be easier to design a pattern and how to bring a pattern around a curve in creative, I do have an issue where like if I build all of this in creative, I would lose motivation to build it yet again in survival. So that's why I have to do all of my work in survival just to keep my personal motivation up. And as you can see, I kind of kept the pattern, you know, a little bit. It's harder to see because of the diagonal and the curve, but I think this works pretty well. All right, now we're starting to get into a range where even pattern textures are becoming very difficult to perceive from a distance and the scale of the overall building. So our next takeaway, we're going to need to go more drastic in our differences in order to keep maintaining a visual appeal to the eye. So I thought that maybe red nether brick next to regular nether brick might give a enough of a same yet different contrast to be seen at a distance. So we come a little distance away, you can still see the clear difference between the red nether brick and the regular nether brick. But if we come back and we pan up slowly, the first level we can very clearly see the design and the pattern, making it stand out, look pretty good. 
And then the second level, we can still pretty clear. You can see how it's flaring out. In the third level, we mostly have still a pattern that we can see and the stark contrast. And then I come up to the top level and just between the height elevation and the distance, you really you can't see the difference between the regular nether brick and the red nether brick. And I put a couple other things up there. I have granite next to the red nether brick. That pops out a bit more. But I'm thinking I might need to go with something extreme, such as the smooth quartz, to really make it pop invisible. Okay, now that up there is coming in a little bit clearer. You can definitely see contrast in the colors. I'm not sure how it's going to look all the way around. And smooth quartz and red nether brick is slightly more... Well, red nether brick isn't too expensive, but the smooth quartz is pretty expensive. You know what? I'm just going to bite it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Let's do it. And now I'm kind of worried that maybe it's too visible too much of a distinction i mean i do like how it looks from this angle and you can clearly see a def definitive definition now however it is so contrasting to the layers below it but you know what i'm gonna go with it i'm just gonna commit i can do something with the spaces between it to make it blend and work from there because I finally have a design that is standing out and is visible and it looks pretty good as you get closer to it and still nicely visible as you pull away so let's just keep going and we will work out what we do with it in the end. Have you ever noticed if you start a project with a full stack of scaffolding, you never seem to end the project with a full set of scaffolding? Oh, but our wire framing is finally done. Oh my god, this took so long. Um, admittedly, the, the plane took up a lot of our time on this episode, a, a lot more than I probably should have spent on it, but it looks good and it's been kind of the talk of the server lately, so that, that was that was worth it. But our wireframing for our base expansion is all... Ah! Okay, that was a mistake. It's okay. We're good. You know what? It's hard to show it all from this angle. I'm going to go up to the top of our tower to show it off. One second. Okay, so from the top of our tallest tower, we should get a much better view of... Wait. What's this? Let me put this here. Oh, that's... That's a lot of copper. Greetings, Minovate of Minovate Land. This message has been transmitted from the official press of Dresden of the totally non-evil nor shady First Reich. Okay, um, uh, yeah, there's a lot here. Bias Ice Wing wants me to contract my services to relocate and rebuild a lab under full government <laughs> surveillance. Okay, okay, yeah. Um, this is certainly enough copper to do a full steampunk build. Uh, yeah. Alright, hold on. Let me make this day real quick. Alright, there it is. The central keep of our castle has now been framed up. We're going to have a grand entryway, a great throne room, and plenty of room to set up personal storage slash sleeping bases inside of there. I'm thinking the very top is going to be 
some form of like hanging garden. That's gonna be like pretty slick. And that central tower, that central square tower, is going to be the main way to go up and down the whole thing. Still a lot of work to do, but we are making progress and we are moving forward. That is looking great. But that's all we have for today. Um, we will be getting to Bias's lab request here in the next episode. And we will also be continuing on our base expansion. Thank you for watching. And if you're not subscribed and you've gotten this far, please consider subscribing. I am trying to reach 500 subscribers before the end of the year. That would be very much appreciated. And as always, have a good one. Goodbye.